Tibor, as far as I can say, enjoyed uh, new things and uh, it was a great pleasure to see him more or less regularly uh, year after year and, uh, and talk to him. And he, I, I hope he, uh, is not, he will not be objecting my taking a subject which is very far from this conference. Um, it's the subject. The, the reason I took it is that there is a recent progress there, uh, and I'm excited about it. Uh, right or wrong, mm. um, turbulence. Uh, it's, it's a strange story. Uh, turbulence was uh, the first major progress in turbulence in 1940s uh, by Kolmogorov and his students um, actually um, led, uh, influenced at least I would say, the development of critical phenomena of theory of phase transitions. Um, what is surprising, what's uh, amusing, surprising is that theory of phase transitions made a huge progress. We calculate critical behavior with high accuracy now. Um, at the same time, and what is more, uh, we have a lot of deep ideas uh, uh, governing critical phenomena. Uh, at the same time, the progress in turbulence was not that great. Um, we still have uh, simple <clears throat> questions which we cannot answer. Um, and uh, why is that? My guess is that uh, why, why such, although you can't say that people didn't try, there are plenty of work, both experimental, numerical, theoretical, but still uh, the state of the subject is much, uh, much more poor than uh, critical phenomena. Uh, the reason for that, I think, is that in critical phenomena, we have uh, the two-dimensional Isaac model, an, an exactly solvable model, uh, which is highly non-trivial and uh, which actually influenced uh, development of the subject, enormously influenced development of the subject. At the same time, there's no such model uh, in the theory of turbulence. And um, what I will discuss in this talk is uh, um, well, some, some models uh, which uh, hopefully replace uh, the Ising model of the critical phenomena. Um, and uh, also I want to discuss some new concepts uh, which slowly arise uh, in this field. First, uh, there is a common uh, phenomenon uh, which Uh, uh, which exists in uh, both uh, uh, critical phenomena and turbulence, and uh, this is universality. Universality means that when you change a little uh, parameters, uh, like interaction between spins or uh, boundary condition of the fluid, uh, at small enough perturbations, the small enough perturbations uh, are irrelevant. They do not, critical behavior remains the same. It's very easy to understand for anyone to, who has little, just uh, a little experience in field theory. Uh, if we look um, at the Dyson's equations, uh, then um, uh, 
it contains bear green function and physical green function. Sigma here is uh, self energy part. And it was a very important conjecture by Patashinsky and Pokrovsky that maybe in the critical region, the bare part of the green function and other quantities, uh, they are um, smaller, much smaller than the real physical part. And so all information about uh, uh, about the bare green function, which means interactions, uh, uh, information about interactions, about the small details. If you perturb a little bit this bare green function, uh, you will not change the critical function, the uh, critical behavior. It's, by the way, I will add in parenthesis that it is very similar to the definition of topological invariance when invariance. In the topological case, uh, you change uh, uh, geometry just a little bit, uh, and the, num the value of topological invariant doesn't change. So may it, it is, uh, there is some similarity between these two points, these two concepts, which uh, maybe worth keeping in mind. And that's the origin of the bootstrap. Bootstrap um, is uh, the idea that uh, critical fluctuations are composed out of themselves. Um, and uh, well, I don't have time to go into more details. The solution of the uh, bootstrap uh, relation uh, <laughs> basically means that you have some complicated uh, equations for correlation functions, uh, which um, do not contain any parameters, do not contain anything. As I said, it is just the, um, uh, they just say that lines representing critical lines in these diagrams representing critical fluctuations uh, are composed of themselves. Um, running ahead of myself, uh, it's, uh, in hydrodynamics, we also have similar situations, similar similar thing, uh, uh, as similar to conformal boot to or bootstrap condition is uh, the fact that when you have com combination of vortices, uh, each vortex moves in the fields created by all others. So there is some grand self consistency of uh, vortex motion, and. Uh, I believe that uh, similar language is appropriate in the cases of critical bootstrap and other things. But I have to move further. Um, so basically, just before I move further, just to mention that uh, bootstrap relations are, can be expressed as kind of Jacobi identity. Uh, for critical fluctuations. Uh, Jacobi identity is the basics, uh, basic uh, relation in Lie groups. And um, so I see some analogy here. Anyway, let, let, let me move. Um, a one dimensional model, which we will, my, my point is that I will try to consider one dimensional simplified, let's say more generally, simplified model of turbulence and uh, see whether I can get some general concepts out of it. Uh, the simple and commonly accepted model is that uh, you have the Navier-Stokes equation, what is written here is one dimensional Navier-Stokes equation 
uh, without pressure and with external force um, F. The, it's commonly accept, accepted that you can generate turbulence with the force being Gauss, Gaussian random force, which will not matter at the end. Um, I guess. Uh, the, which will not matter really uh, whether the, the concrete force will be relevant. We will find some universal exponents which do, do not, because of universality, do not, be, do not depend on any details. So the whole motion, and the whole motion of, uh, uh, of, of, of in, in this model is the following. You have velocity profile if viscosity tends to zero. And uh, if, this, if you set viscosity to zero, you will generate zigzags and uh, it will be physically meaningless. But in fact, uh, the answer is that you have smooth velocity profile and it generates shock waves. Uh, and shock waves are generated by the mass Maxwell rule that areas are equal before and after. Um, um, so what, what can be learned? Uh, to what extent this model can be solved? Um, I don't have time to explain it, but you can derive the master equation uh, for, for the correlation function of this type. So you have velocities, lambda sub-parameters, and you have the correlation function of this type. And there is a quite remarkable uh, fact that uh, you can write down the equation, uh, the equation, the master equation for this quantity, and that will be our starting point. Um, again, I uh, there is some subtle, many subtleties which I cannot touch because lack of time. Especially, there is a subtle. Uh, appearance of Galilean symmetry in these equations. Um, and um, I actually want to stress that these equations, just trust me, I can, don't have time to explain it. Uh, they are extremely similar to to uh, the equations of statistical mechanics born, how it's called, Bogolubo born green, Kirkwood Island. Um, and uh, this is the chain of equations in statistical mechanics, which allows uh, one to derive the Boltzmann equation in the weak coupling linear. And uh, Morally, what I'm doing here is very similar transition. Uh, and I will give you a little later some concrete solutions of these equations, uh, which uh, will give us non highly non-Gaussian distribution of velocity. There is some region in which velocity is distribution is Gaussian, but what is very exciting is that there's non-Gaussian region also. Um, another lesson which we can draw from, um, from this model is the relation between um, uh, turbulence dissipation and uh, axial anom and anomalies of quantum field theory. I shall explain this briefly. Um, there, there was a 
great discovery by Adler, Bell, and Chikiv that uh, if you take massless quantum electrodynamics in four dimensions, then the axial current is not, which is formally conserved, uh, is actually uh, conservation law is uh, removed by by this by certain anomalies, um, provided that we have some. Um, well, for concreteness, I took the instant on background here, and uh, the we have this, I shall explain the meaning of this equation in a moment. And I just want to show you two equations. Um, the meaning of this equation, the meaning of uh, this equation, and as you will see, you will see the meaning of uh, this anomaly in turbulence is the following. Um, we have to, we have uh, in quantum electrodynamics, massless quantum electrodynamics, we have uh, uh, we have to regularize uh, uh, the theory by some cutoff, we should have to assume that some cutoff exists uh, which, uh, at which uh, the theory breaks down. Uh, and this cutoff uh, explicitly breaks axial symmetry. However, uh, as you go to low energy, there are, there are two possibilities. One is that the symmetry still to, still will be uh, violated, uh, or uh, that the symmetry will be intact. And what ABJ uh, uh, showed is that in quantum electrodynamics, as we go to the physical energies, uh, the the input of symmetry breaking at high energy is still felt. And provided that you are in the non-trivial background, which, can, which gives you F, F dual, that's the field strength. Um, now, uh, the same is true for turbulence, except it's not, of course, axial uh, anomaly, but it is energy anomaly. We have at very large scales, we have a fan, which injects energy uh, into the system. It propagates through the scales, uh, reach the physical scale called inertial range, and then dissipates at smaller range, at smaller scales. And that gives the famous Kolmogorov equations, um, which is written here. Now there is a very, that, that's, uh, I think the, the, this is important, I think this is important and not used yet to full extent. Uh, I have, I will have something to say uh, a little later about it. Uh, in fact, this dissipative anomaly um, in, I shall not explain what is Galilean regime here, but uh, it's uh, just some uh, special range of velocities. Uh, you can derive the, reduce the master equation uh, to uh, the equation uh, written here. Um, and you can find scaling solution and get the universal answer, um, which is written here. So W here, is uh, probability for, ha for having velocity. You have two points separated by the distance y, and uh, v is the velocity difference, velocity increment between two points, and w is a probability of this. And um, Uh, Sasha, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but you have five more minutes. 
What? what? Five more minutes for you. Oh, you, uh, yes. Let's see how how many. Let's say six six to seven. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, but thank you. Um, okay. Um, so. Uh, uh, there is a still some unsolved problems here, and uh, there is another solution which can be found for the master equation, uh, which contains not the Bessel function but hypergeometric function, and it relates to non-Galilean invariant. Um, non-Galilean non invariant uh, range. Uh, so that, that's the, the exploration of these master equations. It's, uh, I think, very important. And it's only, we, uh, we only scratched the surface uh, at the moment. Um, and that's uh, one of the reasons I uh, decided to talk about this subject is that my, is my feeling that uh, there are plenty of hidden flare, hidden treasures. Um, I wanted to say hidden pleasures. But anyway, um, it's, a, it's a beautiful subject. Another thing, another concept which uh, seems uh, to be uh, present in turbulence is general covariance. Uh, you have the equations, it appears when we describe the fluid in terms of Lagrange coordinates. And it is related to these master equations, but obviously I, will not, I don't have time for this. Um, and you start, you can start uh, the, this action, which looks like very much like action of string theory, um, is <clears throat> actually uh, gives you um, the evolution of the fluid in Lagrange coordinates. And then you can make some conjectures and drop certain terms. And the resulting uh, probability functional probability for, to have uh, given Lagrangian x of psi. Uh, probability is uh, generally covariant and so perhaps gravitational methods uh, will be of some use. The last thing um, I'm going to this to tell you about so my goal. You see, I'm telling you about unfinished theory. Uh, and I just uh, found some gems here and there. Uh, so I'm telling about these separate uh, findings okay. um, with, without really having a full general theory and concept. Um, but that's probably OK all science, all good science is like that. Um, now the last point which I want to stress, which I want to tell you about, uh, is that uh, the action, this is the action which you can write down for the term, for turbulence. There is a change of variable related to what is called the uh, Hopf call uh, substitution, which can be generalized to, to this uh, problem. Uh, it, it, is, it gives some word identities in functional integral and so on. And by, by this change of variables, you reduce the action to the action of complexified Bose guess, uh, one dimensional Bose guess. So, which is completely integrable system. So uh, it is quite fascinating that turbulence as a 
example of chaos, in fact, has it involves probabilistic description, but probabilities themselves uh, satisfy some uh, are, are obtained from some integrable system. The integrable is somehow anti-turbulent, means anti-turbulence, still uh, it is related to turbulence. And again, this uh, Bose gas uh, is exploration of it just, just begins. Um, there, are, there are plenty, plenty of interesting Morning things in which I did cover here uh, and which hopefully will be clarified. Okay, uh, so this was a pitch for turbulence and I think I will, there are many things left outside this talk uh, and I think I stop here. Thank you. Thank you very much.